Why did your father and mother decide to leave and go north? Uh, there was this migration because things just weren't good in the South. I mean, you, and Dad was really concerned about us as boys, you know, growing up. Uh, policemen, even the, the, the law enforcement people being disrespectful and and he said, I need to get my boys out of Mississippi, I mean, and, he, and, and he did. He was, he was concerned about violence against you? Yes, and even, I mean, you think about they could come in the house in the middle of the night and take you out, like the Emmett Till case, uh, where they went in the house and got him out of, the, out of his grandfather's house. And we didn't have that sense of urgency, but he did, because I'm sure he was confronted with it, you know, every day. Every, did he ever talk about it? No, he didn't. I never remember talking about it. Uh, it was just a part of living in Making the South. it from one day to another. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he majored more in, in talking about... One of his churches was on a plantation. I'd, he I'd heard uh, them call this place King and Anderson. I thought it was one word, King and Anderson, but it was the King and Anderson plantation in Arkansas. And only later, much later, much later, did I read about this this plantation. I said, my dad had a church on that, on that plantation. Uh, the white people allowed them to have, you know, church on the plantation. And he was the pastor of the church, even though we lived in Mississippi. He also had a church in West Helena, Arkansas. I don't have any memories of that. One church I kind of remember in uh, in uh, Clarksdale. It was out from Clarksdale, another little town that I can't remember. But I remember the the steering mechanism on the car broke when we were ready to leave, and we couldn't leave, so we wound up spending another night. And I was anxious to go home. I was I was about to ask how he got around to all of these different. He had places. a car. He always had a car, yeah. Uh, he was in that group of preacher, preachers that that was doing well, and if you, if you, if that was the only thing you did, if you didn't farm, or you didn't have a job, then you were in that group. So, he got rid of farming when he left the farm, and he never had to work for white people. So, uh, he had a car, and he always had, he always had a car. But the first opportunity that came. And it came in, a, in, a, in an unusual way. The president of the convention, J.S. Jackson, uh, got his church in Chicago. He was someplace else. After there was an airplane crash, and it killed four or five ministers, including the president of the convention, of the, uh, of the National Baptist Convention. And, and that left three churches in Chicago alone. I, I'm not sure how many preachers were in the crash, but it was it was devastating. And and then J. H. Jackson was called to Olivet. Olivet was only six blocks from the church they called my dad. There were some ministers between the, the minister who died at my dad's church and my dad coming there. And after I think it was two ministers, but anyway he wound up in the church that one of the ministers died had died, and Jace Jackson wound up in Olivet, and he and my daddy became friends. That's when he be, I said he was Jace Jackson's prayer when Jace Jackson got, and Jace Jackson worked his way up to be the president of the convention. Tell me about your memories of, of that transition for you as a, as, a, as a young boy from Mississippi and the fields and the rural life kind of thing, and then all of a sudden you're in the north. What was what was Yeah, that like? except it wasn't in Mississippi. I, I, uh, we lived in a city not far from the school, and we, we didn't have, you know, mother might have had a garden, but we didn't, I, didn't, I never had the experience of, of living. Uh, it was rural because the place was small. But going from there to Chicago, uh, we were excited 
as as boys that we're going to Chicago because you know you hear about Chicago, Chicago. At one point, I'm told there were more Chicago, uh, more Mississippians in Chicago than black than was left in Mississippi. And when you got to Chicago, I mean that was it. Uh, that was I remember. It. What do you mean that was it? Oh my goodness, you <clears throat> you, you were through with the ways of the South. Except that wasn't true because they brought all those ways to Chicago. I mean, all the food and the culture just expanded. But I do remember, uh, and I and I have, I have wonderful memories. I was outside playing, and I, I I'd not been accustomed to row houses. I mean, and we there was a lot across the street outside just playing, and looked over there and saw all those row houses. Had no idea which one was ours. <laughs> like, I did not know. <laughs> oh my God! I don't get in the house. I couldn't even get in the house. Uh, and the church was about two blocks from the house. And then uh, the school, they wanted to put me back a grade because I came from the south. And just because you came from the south. Yeah, yeah. Without no testing. No testing. No testing. I guess they had tested enough, and they knew the ones coming from the south were not up to snuff. So they wanted to do that. Uh, I did finally wind up getting in the house and knowing, make sure that I know which house to go back to. I said to myself, "Make sure you know," and I did. But we made friends and had a wonderful neighborhood. Uh, totally I, black. A yes. Totally black neighborhood. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I never knew I lived in the ghetto until I was much older. When they told me I lived in the ghetto, I said, we live in a community. It had churches, it had schools, it had drugstores, it had movie houses, it had all the things that people had. Why Why was it a ghetto? And, of course, I hadn't put all that together at that point. But we had a wonderful growing up. I remember if Joe Lewis would fight, the whole street would be empty. Everybody would be in the house. And we didn't have a television to begin with. And one of my dad's members had one. We used to go to the house and watch TV like we were going to the movies or something, watching this little TV screen. 